Hi everyone, I'm Farida and welcome to the Dentro Radiology. Let's talk about the intraoral anatomy radiography on practical imaging of the maxilla premolar and molars. So what landmarks we see in this region? The maxillary sinus, the sinus septum, the zygomatic process of the maxillary bone, the trochaic plates of the sphenoid bone, the humlar process, the coronary process, and the maxillary uterus tip. The maxillary sinus. On the stop line we're showing, you can see the position of the maxillary sinus in the bone. It starts from the canine for the maxillary molars. On the practical images of the maxillary molars, you can see the floor of the maxillary sinus, the degree of the extension of the sinus into the upper process is variable. It can be above the apex of the posterior teeth or it can be beyond the apex towards the alveolar ridge. And mostly when the loss of the posterior teeth occur, the sinus floor may extend further between the teeth. So you'll see this kind of appearance, like an up and down appearance. See it in the practical imaging and it's like the roots projected into the sinus cavity but we have a thin layer of bone covering the roots like a fusion between the lamina dura and the floor of the sinus you can see the zygomatic process of the maxilla we'll talk about it later and we can see the sinus septum often one or several radiopack lines are seen in the image of the maxillary sinus these opaque lines are called the septa. They're thin folds of cortical bone that project a few millimeters away from the wall of the sinus. You can see it in here, the maxillary floor and the maxillary septa. The molar process or the zygomatic process is a projection of the maxillary bone and it extends on the buccal surface and articulates with the maxillary process of the zygoma. On practical radiograph, it can be seen in the region of the second and first molar as a U-shaped radiopack line with its opening upward. You can see the sinus floor inferior border of the zygoma process you can see an extension posterior from the zygomatic process it's called the inferior border of the zygoma and we can see it as a uniform radio opacity over the apex of the molars the maxillary tuberosity is at the posterior lower part of the maxillary surface and it's round kind of like a rounded eminence especially it's prominent after the growth of the wisdom teeth this is the maxillary tuberosity on the practical imaging and you can see it in this practical imaging underneath the maxillary tuberosity you see the wisdom tooth that is still impacted The trigoid plates and the homolar process. The medial and lateral trigoid plates of the sphenoid bone are immediately posterior to the maxillary bone. We don't always see these two plates on the intraoral radiograph, on the practical radiograph of the third molar, but sometimes they're appearance, and if we see them, they're like a single radio pack shadow. And the humbler process. The humbler process is extend inferior from the medial trigoid plate. It's called the humbler process and it's a place for the attachment of the medial trigoid muscle. And this is the humbler process we see in the practical imaging of the maxillary molars, especially the third molar. The coronate process. The coronate process of the mandible is frequently seen on the practical radiographs of the muscular molars. It's like a triangular radiopacity. So, depending on the position of the jaw when the mouth is opened and downward and forward movement of the mandible, can cause a superimposition 
of the chronic process on the molars or it can sometimes even be superimposed on the teeth so maybe our diagnostic would be uh, involved and we be we mistaken for a root fragment and that time we have to remake the radiograph so for taking the second radiograph we will ask the patient to minimally open their mouth Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to share it with your friends and press the bell button for the next videos. Thank you all for your support and have a nice day.